Okay, now we're ready to start working with our data in Access. I actually forgot to show you in the previous video, we've now got our 20 appropriate records in a table. So what we need to do in this one is we need to have meaningful names, which we've hopefully got already, but we need to add a description to each field. And then we need to set the sizes for text fields, validation rules, validation text, at least one, a combo box and an input mask. So just to show you, in terms of descriptions, this is just an example from a past paper that the department set. The descriptions need to be something like this. It doesn't have to be in both languages. It can also just be a single language, whichever language you used for your responses. But you actually need to describe what needs to be captured or what does this specific field contain. So in your database, you'll be opening your table now and you can resize fields like the timestamp. And what you're going to do now is we're going to go to the design view. You need to first check that the data type is correct for each one. So what I would personally do is I would go per field. I would first put in a little description that says what this contains. I would check that the data type is correct and see if there are any field properties that I can set to ensure accurate data. And you need to picture now that more data might be added and captured in this database. That's basically what we're practicing here, even though we're practically not going to be adding more data. So for gender is short text. That's correct. We definitely need to change the field size. You definitely can't keep it at 255 and something like 200 is also far too large. Hey, you need to make it the maximum size that the genders that we've captured can be. You could perhaps use the validation rule here. You can decide if the required, if it was required in your original questionnaire, then you can apply required here as well. Input mask, perhaps gender could work for input mask if you don't have another field. Timestamp for input mask is perhaps a good one. If you use it on a date and time field, please use the wizard. These three dots can help you through the process. And then you can choose something like short date or medium date, and then it actually builds the input mask for you. Check which one you're going to be using for your combo box or your list box. So in this instance, I would think it's probably going to be something like who was bearing the additional costs. So the three options that we have here are employer, myself and not applicable. I think there was actually another option in the questionnaire itself. It was client. So employer, myself and not applicable. So I'm going to make a lookup wizard a drop down list combo box option here so that I can click in the cell and choose the different options. All right, all done there. Just please remember, even though you've set this, that it's still a good idea because it goes back to the actual data type being short text that you still need to set the field size to the maximum size of the text that it contains. Just to give you an idea of the descriptions, this is basically what you'll be doing. You could also put a much longer description than you could for the field name. So if the field name is not that clear anymore because you had to shorten it so much, you can definitely put in a clearer part or even the whole question if you want to over here. Please remember that yes and no, you don't use yes and no as a drop down option. Yes and no needs to be a data type work from home. In other words, will be a yes, no data type. Then you can choose whether you want to display that as a checkbox, as a combo box, or whether you're just going to keep the text in there on the lookup tab. So what we've done now is we've given it meaningful names. We've set appropriate field sizes, given it a, a combo box and we've got an input mask and we actually did these in the previous video.